Okay, now let's do some trick um, questions, revision on it. Let's see the first one. The length of the sides of a triangle are in the ratio 7 is to 9 is to 9. Calculate correct to the nearest degree the angle between the equal sides. So let's consider the first one first. Now, it's a triangle, so let's sketch a triangle. Now, what is the ratio? It is 7 is to 9 is to 9. So let's suppose that this is 7, and if this is 9, this would also be 9. Now, we are being told to find the angle between the equal sides. So this is 9, this is 9. So the angle between the equal sides is this. So let's name it theta. Now, let's say that this is A. Let's call this B. Then let's also call this C. Now, clearly, we can use the cosine rule. So using the cosine rule, now when do we use the cosine rule? We use the cosine rule when we don't have a right angle triangle, that is we don't have 90 degrees in the triangle. What does the cosine rule say? It says that where the angle is facing square, so you can say that BC square equal to the squares of the other two sides, the addition. That is AB square plus AC square minus 2 times what you have added. Cos the angle, cos the angle, which is theta. Now what is BC? That is also 7 square. What is AB? That is 9 square plus 9 square minus 2. What is AB? So that is times 9 times 9 cos theta, the angle. Now this 7 square would give us that is 49. 9 square will give us 81. 9 square will give us 81. Now, what is 2 times 9? That is 18. 18 times 9, that is 162. Cos theta. Now, we want to find theta. You have to be very careful. Note, we can't subtract this from the 81 because of this cos theta. So we have to group like things. So we have 49. 81 plus 81, that is 162, minus 162 cos theta. We want to find theta. So we group like terms. Let this come here, and then this also go there. So you have 162 cos theta to be equal to 162 minus 49. So from here, what is 162 minus 49? And then this will give us 113. So we'd have 162 cos theta equal to 113. I want to find theta. So we divide by what is multiplying the theta, 113 over 162. Now theta will be equal to cos inverse, 113 all over 162. Now, what is cos inverse of 113 over 162? And this is 45.770. Now, the question says it should be to the nearest degree, nearest degree. So clearly, to the nearest degree, 45. Now, the 7 will change the 5, so we have 46 degrees. Now, to the nearest degree. Okay, now let's see this. It says that from sine x equal to half, where x is between 0 and the 90 degrees, we should evaluate sine x cos x all over cos x plus tan x. Now, what is the sine x? We're given that sine x is equal to, that is, half. Don't forget, so... Now, the so means opposite over hypotenuse. So let's 
come out of our right angle triangle. Now this is 90 degrees, the angle, which is x. Now, so opposite, so these are opposite of our hypotenuse. Now, we don't know the adjacent, so let's call it A. Now, from our right angle triangle, what do we know? Pythagoras in one square, one square plus A square equal to two square. So you have A square to equal to two square minus one square. A square, two square, that is four minus one. A square, that is three. I want to find A, so A will be equal to square root of three. Now, what am I told to find? I have to find that is sine x cos x and then tan x. So let me find cos x and then tan x. Now, from the diagram, what is cos x? Now, cos x, remember it is ka, 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 which is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. What is my adjacent? That is a. So that is root 3. What is my hypotenuse? That is 2. I'm also supposed to find tan x. What is tan x to That is what? Opposite over adjacent. My opposite is 1. What is my adjacent? My adjacent is root 3. From here, what am I supposed to do? I have to rationalize. So I have 1 over root 3 times root 3 over 3. And this will give me root 3. And root 3 times root 3. This is giving me 3. Now from here, what am I supposed to find? The question says that I should find sine x cos x all over cos x plus tan x. Now, the numerator sine x cos x. What is sine x? That is 1 over 2 times cos x. Cos x, that is root 3 over 2. Now, this is the numerator divided by the denominator. What is the denominator? Cos x plus tan x. So my cos x is root 3 over 2. And then my tan x is root 3 over 3. Now, from our idea of rational numbers. When you're multiplying numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So this will give us root 3 all over 4. 2 times 2, 4. Our division sign. Now, over here, we have to find the LCM. What's the LCM? 6. How many times will 2 go into 6? 2 will go into 6 3 times, times the numerator. So you have 3 root 3 plus. How many times will 3 go into 2? Into 6, that is 2 times. 2 times the numerator, that is 2 root 3. Simplifying, we have 3 root 3 plus 2 root 3, that is 5 root 3 all over 6. Now, from my idea of rational numbers, when you are dividing, that is if you have a over b divided by c over d, this is equal to a over b times d over C. So you multiply the numerator and numerator, denominator times denominator. Clearly this is the same as root 3 over 4 times 6 all over 5 root 3. Now let's see this root 3 will cancel that root 3. 2 will go into itself 2 times, 2 will go into 6, that is 3 times. Clearly what do you have here? We have 3 all over 2 times 5, 10. Okay, now this is Novdeck 2019, and that was the question number four. Given that tan y equal to root 2, where x and y are acute angles, first we find a cos y. Now, this, we have to sketch our right angle triangle. We know tan y is equal to root 2, and this is the same as over 1. Now, don't forget your sukatwa. So tan, that is twa, so opposite over adjacent. We have to consider a right angle triangle.
Now, what is the opposite? The angle is y. What is the opposite? What is the opposite? The opposite is root 2. What is the adjacent? That is 1. Now, we don't know the hypotenuse. Let's name it. Let's name it A. Now, from our idea of Pythagoras theorem, what do we know? We know A squared equal to, that is, root 2 squared plus 1 squared. A squared will be equal to, that is, 2 plus 1. A squared A square will be equal to 3. A equal to root 3. Now, we want to find cos y. We want to find cos y. So from here, what is r cos y? That is k adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is 1. What is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse was root 3. Now, we are not supposed to leave our answer in this form. This is irrational, so we have to rationalize. So times root 3 all over root 3. Now we know that root a times root a is a. Clearly, root 3 times root 3 is 3. So 1 times root 3, we have root 3. Root 3 times root 3, and this is giving us 3. That's the first one. Now the second one, the b is saying that, the b is saying that we should find x. If sine x, so we have sine x is equal to 1 minus cos y. Now what is the cos y? So here we have 1 minus root 3 all over 3. Now we can use the calculator and when you point this on the calculator you're going to get 0 0.1835. That is our sine x. We want to find x. So x will be equal to Sine inverse, 0 0.1835. And this is 10.573. So let's say probably to one decimal place, so that is 10.6. That is uh, x. Okay, now, if cos t equal to 4 or 5, what is between 0 and 90? Find without using mathematical tables or calculator the value of 1 over 1 minus sine t minus 1 over 1 plus sine t. Now, what do we know? Clearly, we've been given cos t, which is 4 over 5. So you're supposed to find our sine t. We have to come out with our right angle triangle. What's the angle? T. Now, we know Sukatwa. So, cause, because of the cause, we are supposed to use K. That is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is 4. That's the numerator. Hypotenuse is 5. We don't know the opposite. Let's say, let's say the opposite is A. From here, we can use the right angle triangle. So for me, we can say that a square plus 4 square equal to 5 square. a square, 4 square is 16, 5 square is 25. So from here, a square, that is 25 minus 16. So from here, we have a square to be equal to, that is 25 minus 16, which is 9. So you have a to be square root of 9, of 9, which is equal to 3. Or we can say that a square is equal to 3 square, which implies that a is equal to 3. When the exponents are the same, we equate the basis. Okay. Therefore, what is our sign t? So, so that is what opposite over hypotenuse. What is the opposite? Which is the A. We had the opposite to be 3. What is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is 5. Therefore, we want to find 1 all over 1 minus sine t.
minus 1 all over 1 plus sine t. Now, this is the same as 1 all over 1 minus 3 over 5. Minus, we have 1 all over 1 plus 3 over 5. Now, we can invent it. Now, from here, 1, what is 1 minus 3 over 5? This is just 2 over 5. Now, this is 1. Here, we can change it to be, that is 5 over 5. So, we are going to get 8 over 5. Now, this is the same as this is the same as 5 over 2, and this is the same as 5 over 8. Now, from here, what is the LCM? The LCM is 8. 2 will go into 8, that is 4 times. 4 times um, 5. Oh, this is negative. This is negative. That is negative. That is negative. Now, 2 will go into um, 8, that is 4 times, 4 times 5, this is giving us 20, 8 will go into 8, that is 1, 1 times 5, you have 5, clearly, we have here 15 over 8, how many times will 8 go into 15, and this will be, that is one whole number, 7, over 8. Okay, or we can find the LCM, which is 1 minus sine t. 1 plus sine t. Now, this 1 minus sine t will cancel this. Leaving the numerator, that is 1 plus sine t. So you have 1 plus sine t. Now, this will cancel this. Leaving this, we have minus 1 minus sine t. Now, this is equal to, we have 1 plus sine t minus 1 plus sine t, all over 1, my, 1 square minus sine square t. We know the down one difference of two squares. So, we have, this, this will cancel this, we have 2 sine t, all over 1 minus sine square t. Now, 1 minus sine square t, is the same as cos square t. But in this case, comma student, you might not know that. So let's substitute from here. What is the sine t? We know sine t was 3 over 5. So you have 2 times 3 over 5. This is the numerator divided by the denominator. 1 minus 3 over 5 all square. Now, this is over 1. 2 times 3, so 6 over 5 divided by, we have 1 minus 9 over 5 squared, which is 25. Now, what can we do about this? 1 minus 9 over 25, we can change this to be 25 over 25. So it's going to be 25 minus 9, which is 16. So we have 16 all over 25. Now, from here, we have 6 over 5 times 25 over 16. 5 will go here, 1. 5 will go into 25. That is 5 times. 2 will go here, 3. 2 will go here, 8. So, we are going to get, that is 15 over 8. 3 times 5, 15. 1 times 8, we have that. Now, how many times would 8 go into 15? That is one whole number, 7 over 8. Thanks a lot for watching.